Let me just turn on the recording. Perfect. Okay. Hello, welcome. Uh, my name is Megan and I'm here today with my colleague Taylor Pierce. We'll say more about ourselves in a moment. Uh, and we are coming to you today to talk about pleasure as a form of self-care right now during this crazy quarantine lockdown situation that we all find ourselves in. So the title of our presentation today is Accessing Pleasure in the Midst of a Pandemic. Last week we did a webinar about keeping calm. Um, it was all about understanding our stress responses and strategies we can use to manage and lower our anxiety when we're stuck in very stressful situations. So today we're building on that conversation, specifically talking about how accessing pleasure and really prioritizing pleasure during this time is something that we all deserve, but also a strategy that is really effective and useful in lowering stress and anxiety um, during our time at home coping with this pandemic. So welcome, we are so glad to have you. This presentation today is geared towards the individual experience, but we are going to talk about ways that you can use pleasure as a tool to connect with your partner as well. Um, just a disclaimer, we are going to be talking today about sexual pleasure and non-sexual forms of pleasure. So if there's anyone in your space who you're not comfortable um, listening in about sexual pleasure, please take a few moments to make sure you're in a private space, um, you know, headphones on, whatever you need to do to feel really comfortable opening your mind and body to conversations about the different ways that we feel good in our bodies. So I'm Megan Meganson. I'm a licensed therapist and a certified sex therapist. And, and I'm the owner and clinical director of the Center for Couples and Sex Therapy. Our office is located in Portland, Oregon, but right now we're coming to you live from the internet um, and welcome anyone from any part of the country to watch our webinar and learn how utilizing pleasure can help make your life better. And Taylor and I, Taylor and I really think by extension, the more of us that tap into pleasure, the, the better we are making our world um, right now during this time when, when pleasure feels so inaccessible to many of us. I am so happy to have my colleague Taylor Pierce with me today. Taylor, do you want to um, introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Hi, everybody. My name is Taylor Pierce, and I am a therapist at the Center for Couples and Sex Therapy. Um, and I'm really excited to talk to you about how to access pleasure during this crisis that we're experiencing. So Taylor and I were having a conversation the other day. Well, a full disclaimer, Taylor and I spend a lot of time talking to each other about pleasure uh, and how it, it shows up and doesn't show up in our society. We were talking specifically about the quarantine and the, the way that we're responding to the pandemic and how the tendency is to go straight to um, stress and anxiety, right? We're sort of inundated with information about the virus, about potential economic collapse, um, all of these, you know, feeds of information. There, there are definitely nuggets of truth in everything that we're hearing right now, um, but hearing it all at once while we're stuck inside is, you know, it's like an equation for stress and overwhelm. So we really believe that pleasure matters now more than ever, even though it feels like um, a really challenging time to tap in to pleasure in our bodies. And our last webinar, uh, which we have posted on our website, we'll show you our website at the end of the presentation today. So you're welcome to, to go back and, and watch the anxiety webinar if you're interested. We talked about the stress response. We kind of mapped out what happens in our minds and our bodies when we are exposed information that makes us feel unsafe, insecure. And basically, when we get logged into a stress response, it's like we put blinders on. And when these blinders are up, all we can see is the information that's directly in front of us that feeds into the belief in our minds and our bodies that we're not safe and we need to be afraid. 
we talked before about how do we put these blinders down? You know, what do we do to intentionally and actively reduce the stress information that's being fed into our minds? Because we know that when the blinders are up, like no good, no good comes when the blinders are up. I have a really hard time regulating my experience and feeling safe and calm in my body. Taylor and I also believe that right on the other side of these blinders, are pleasurable experiences that are waiting for you to notice them, access them, experience them. So we're gonna to talk today about uh, both what pleasure is, how to access pleasure, and why it's so hard to focus on pleasure when we have our stress blinders in place. Anything you wanna to add to that, Taylor, before we jump in? Yeah, I'm really excited to jump in. I really believe that like Megan is saying, now more than ever is a time when we really need pleasure. And so my hope is that when you leave this webinar, that you feel like you have an understanding of what to do with the barriers that show up for you around pleasure, and also that you can really sink into pleasurable experiences to boost your resilience for getting through this really challenging time. Mm. What a great word, Taylor, resiliency. I think that's a great reminder that what we're doing now is reducing the immediate impacts of stress and anxiety, but we're also boosting our resiliency because, I mean, honestly, we don't know how long this is going to last, right? We don't know how long we're going to be in quarantine, how long our favorite businesses are going to be closed, or we can't see our therapist in person. So it's really wise and proactive for all of us to be, you know, actively building up our resiliency. That way, if this, if this drags on longer than, than we hope or anticipate, we can rest assured that we'll all be okay. Um, and, and pleasure is the path to being okay, always. So let's jump in. What is pleasure? We want to start, you, you probably think you know what pleasure is, and, and you might already have a, a beautiful diverse understanding of the different ways that you can experience pleasure. But Taylor and I as sex therapists find that folks often have a very narrow definition and understanding of what it means to feel pleasure. And because we live in a very sexualized society, when we think of TV and media, there's sex images coming at us all the time. Some of us begin to associate pleasure with sexual pleasure, with eroticism, and if we feel uncomfortable with eroticism or sexual pleasure, we might start to resist the word pleasure altogether. Right? Anytime we hear about pleasure or someone tells us we need a little pleasure in our lives, that might actually feel threatening because that moment isn't the time or the place to feel something sexual. So Taylor and I want to offer a much broader definition of pleasure. I, I want you to think, if you will, of pleasure as a big umbrella with lots of things that fall underneath that umbrella. Pleasure for me is anything that makes me feel good in my mind and in my body. It can be sexual, it can be erotic, but that's just one type of pleasure that you have available to you for experiencing. Today we're gonna to talk a little bit about sexual pleasure, but we're actually gonna talk way more about sensual pleasure. Sensual pleasure in our minds is the pleasure that we experience connected to any of our senses, sight, smell, taste, touch, sound. Anything that feels pleasurable, that comes into our bodies through the senses, we are going to call sensual pleasure. And we find that sensual pleasure is a wonderful way to soothe ourselves, especially when we're stressed and anxious. Pleasure is a wonderful way to connect with others. And it's, you know, part of life. It's a core part of our human experience to feel and um, experience pleasure whenever it's available to us. So again, pleasure means anything that feels good in our minds or bodies. We're gonna break that up into sensual pleasure and sexual pleasure. We'll talk more today about the sensual component, how I feel good, in my body, connected to my five senses. Taylor, anything you want to add to that conversation? Yeah, I just, I really want to emphasize that expansive perspective around pleasure. 
that I think, and we'll talk about the barriers more in a moment, but I think when we're dealing with a lot of stress and overwhelm, it can feel like there's more barriers to experiencing pleasure than there is space to access it. And so I think having this really expansive perspective around pleasure gives us so many much, so many more openings to experience and access it on our own or with our partner and loved ones. And so I really want to encourage that expanded perspective because it's so much more spacious. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, let's move forward. So I know that with everything that's happening in the world, you might wonder, why are we talking about pleasure right now? Why do we want to focus on pleasure and advocate for your pleasure when there's so much stress and overwhelm and uncertainty? And so what I want to share with you right now is why we believe that pleasure matters so much. So the first point I want to make is that pleasure allows you to be fully in your body. Now, right now, because of the stress and the overwhelm and the uncertainty and the loss and all of the really challenging feelings coming up for all of us, it's really easy to be stuck in our heads. We're often thinking about, you know, what's happening in the world and how this will impact us and our loved ones and what to do. And we're so stuck in our heads that our embodied experience is really not getting a lot of space. So I think that pleasure really matters right now because it allows you to be in your body and to get out of that, that kind of stress response cycle that you might find yourself getting in when you're in your head. The second point that I want to make is that pleasure helps you redirect to the present moment. Now I know right now there's a lot of uncertainty about the future. And so you might find yourself really thinking about, well, what happens tomorrow and in the coming weeks and in the coming months, how does this impact our future? And it makes so much sense to be worried about that right now. And I think also why pleasure can be so powerful is it allows us to be grounded in the present. And when we are grounded in the present moment, it really soothes our nervous system. It brings us a sense of groundedness and allows us to just really sink into what we're feeling and experiencing in that moment. And so I think that's another reason it's really powerful right now. I also believe that pleasure is a form of self-care. And I know you've probably heard about self-care a lot, and I believe that's for a good reason. Um, we really, really need to take care of ourselves all the time. But especially when we're dealing with so much change and uncertainty and fear, we really, really deserve to tend to ourselves and to care for ourselves. And that self-care allows us to show up more fully in our day-to-day -day and in tackling all of the things that we might have on our plate right now. So it's a form of self-care. Pleasure is also a form of relationship care. With everything that's happening in the world, you might find that there's added tension on your relationship, and that makes a lot of sense. Um, and also, I think that because we are relational beings, we really rely on connection and support and community to do okay and to take care of ourselves. And so I think pleasure is a way, if you're able to access it with your partner or your loved ones or your community, to really tend to and care for your relationships. And also, I know I mentioned resilience earlier, and I really wanna highlight that again that pleasure is a really powerful resource for moving through challenging times. Because it allows us to be in our bodies, because it allows us to be in the present moment, because it allows us to take care of ourselves and our relationships, it really builds our resilience for navigating uncertainty and change and stress. And so sinking into pleasure will allow you to feel much more resilient as we adjust to this new normal that we're all living in. Uh, Taylor, thanks. You make a very compelling argument um, for why pleasure matters right now. And I, I just want to kind of circle back to a conversation that you and I were having uh, just before we started recording the webinar about pleasure being a tool that works 
for us individually and works for the relationship. So it feels like there's a high return on investment for focusing on pleasure right now. Um, and, and I think you, it's like, a, I want you to think of it as a one-two punch, right? The first step is I use pleasure to calm myself. Because when I'm calmer and I'm feeling taken care of, I have more bandwidth to show up for my partner, my kids, or my friends. The second step is that if I use pleasure intentionally to connect with, like let's use partners as an example, um, it creates shared connection between the two of us. So now we're creating this self-fulfilling, self-perpetuating cycle where positivity begets more positivity and pleasure begets more pleasure, which is the exact opposite of what most of us tend to experience in stressful times, where stress leads to more stress, which leads to tension and discomfort and conflict and, you know, fill in the blank with whatever challenging or negative experience you're going through. So we really are, pleasure matters. It, it, it matters for all of the reasons Taylor mentioned, but just to go even more global, like expand the lens. You know, pleasure is your path out of suffering um, and it's available to you in all moments. Let's talk about mindfulness. What a buzzword. I'm sure everybody is hearing about mindfulness everywhere right now if you weren't hearing about it everywhere already. Uh, if you don't have a mindfulness practice, you might feel a little bit puzzled about what exactly mindfulness is or how mindfulness can be used to connect to the pleasure experiences that Taylor and I are talking about specifically today. So before we unpack this quote, let me give you a working definition of mindfulness. Mindfulness is the awareness that arises when you pay attention on purpose to the moment to moment experiences without judgment and in the service of self understanding and compassion. That can be a lot. Mindfulness is what happens when I pay attention moment to moment to my experience right here, right now, without judgment. I'm not meeting myself with criticism or judgment, but I'm meeting myself with a sense of curiosity and compassion around whatever is arising for me right now in this present moment. Taylor was saying uh, just a moment ago that pleasure is something that helps us get into our bodies. And the more fully present we are in our bodies, the easier it is to turn down the volume on the stress mind or the anxious mind. Mindfulness is the tool that we use to do that, to move from our anxious minds down into the felt sense of our, uh, of our sensing bodies. And this here is where we have the capacity to really experience pleasure. Let's take a look at this quote. The present moment is filled with joy and happiness. If you are attentive, you will see it. This is the belief, this is the bias, if you will, that I'm bringing into the webinar today. My belief is that no matter how stressed or anxious or catastrophic things feel all around us, pleasure is still available. There is still pleasure all around us, no matter how bad things feel. I want to walk you through a, a really quick exercise. So if you feel comfortable closing your eyes, you can do so. And if that's not comfortable for you, just soften your gaze, maybe looking towards the floor or picking a, a blank spot on the wall. And I want you in this moment to really visualize the space that you're in right now in this moment. You don't, I don't want you to visualize yourself on some pristine beach where you took your favorite vacation or you know, some space that you keep popping up on Instagram. No, like I am not encouraging you in this moment to imagine an ideal scenario. Really want you to give yourself permission to be present wherever you are in this moment. And as you're imagining your space, I want you to see if you can identify one or two items in your space or qualities about your space that are pleasant. If you find that it's really hard to imagine what your space looks like with your eyes closed, try gently opening them and just 
take a look around. Is there anything in your space right now that has the potential to bring you sensual pleasure? Remember, pleasure that you sense through your body. And once you've identified one or two qualities about the space or items within your space that have the potential to bring you pleasure, slowly open your eyes, come back into this present moment. So Taylor, what did you notice about your space? Yeah, I noticed that I have this really warm cup of tea um, and that brings me a lot of pleasure. I also noticed this really soft, cozy blanket I have on my bed and how, how soft it is and how it keeps me warm. And that made me feel a lot of pleasant feelings. And then also my cat is in this room. And I was thinking about when I pet my cat, how soft her fur is and how that just really allows me to be grounded in a moment when I'm able to just feel how soft she is and hear her purrs. And it just brings me a lot of pleasure and joy. Hmm. That's awesome. Um, thanks for sharing, Taylor. So I'm standing right now in my home office, which uh, when I'm not my best mindful self can trigger associations of stress and overwhelm. So I think it's interesting, right? Because you're recording in your bedroom. Mm -hmm. right now and I'm recording in my home the you know the room I use in my house is my office um, and those two rooms have a really different connotation for me if I were recording in my bedroom right now I think it would be a lot easier my body would already be responding in a softer more pleasurable way but because I'm here in my office uh, my body is sort of hardwired in a sense not really but in a sense, to, to be in work mode, you know, pay attention, you know, be, you know, be alert, feel some stress. So in this space, I have to work a little bit harder to notice what exists here around me that brings me a bit of pleasure. Some of our things are similar, Taylor. I, I think Taylor and I are similar in this um, highly sensitive way. Uh, I have my, my warm cup of tea. And, you know, I, I know that I, I really like putting my hands around a hot mug. I'm wearing my like soft baggy sweater that I would never actually wear out in public, but like in, in this room at this time, it feels really soft and, and cozy. I have a space heater on in the corner. So there's a quality of my space that feels really warm. Um, and that brings me some, some pleasure, helps me slow down a bit when I feel warm. And I'm also aware of uh, the flowers that I can see out this window. Can see some daffodils. We can see some some rosemary that's um, uh, blooming. Like the rosemary is flowering, and there are bees all around it. And and I know that there's a a quilt on my wall that my grandmother made for me. And you know that's uh, something I can take in with my eyes that brings me pleasure. So yeah, I think this is just some examples of what you might notice when you really slow down and turn your attention to, to the things that are available to you right now that have the potential to bring you pleasure. But that potential will only become reality if you use these mindfulness abilities to tune in to your present moment experience. And that does mean turning the volume down on our stress brain and tuning in to here and now the pleasure that I am taking in through my senses. Let's keep moving. So I want to touch on the barriers that could be coming up for you around pleasure right now. Um, I know that this could be true all the time, but I think especially right now, some of these are showing up a lot more. So you might be feeling stress or fear or overwhelm, uncertainty around the crisis that's happening in our world right now. You might also feel guilt and shame. I think that guilt and shame is something that shows up around pleasure in general, because as Megan was sharing earlier, we don't have a lot of very helpful messaging in our society about pleasure and sexuality and how to connect with it. 
And so I think for a lot of folks, there could be guilt and shame inherently around connecting with pleasure. But I think that could be magnified right now because there is so much suffering happening in the world that it can bring up feelings of guilt or shame to even try to connect with pleasure when you know that a lot of people are suffering. And I wanna validate that it makes sense that that could be coming up for you. I also think there could be time constraints or space limitations. So if you're sharing space right now with your family, it might feel hard to even find an opening in terms of space to connect with pleasure and connect with yourself. Um, or it might feel like there's so much to do, so much to focus on, so much to get done that it doesn't feel like there's a lot of time to connect with pleasure. So I hear and I understand how all of these barriers could be showing up right now. And I think it's valid and it makes sense to feel any of these things or all of these things. And my hope is that as I name these barriers, we can also talk about how to move through them so that you can validate your experience and then also create some space to redirect to experience pleasure. And I just want to add to that, Taylor, coming back to the mindfulness lens. You know, part of a mindful meditation practice is learning that we don't have to change anything about the present moment in order to access peace, pleasure, calm. And I'm hearing that come up a ton with my therapy clients right now, as I'm sure you are too, Taylor, like really, especially this guilt and shame piece around like I how can I feel good right now? Or how can I, you know, how can I even show up for therapy when so many people have lost their jobs or, you know, don't have access to healthy food or are stuck in a house with, you know, three children under the age of seven. Um, and to that, I, I just show up again with mindfulness and say, you know what, nothing needs to change. We don't need to change the fact that you feel guilty. We don't need to change the fact that you don't have space. Pleasure is accessible to us at any moment, regardless of what is true about our present moment experiences. And I think for a lot of people, realizing that they don't have to change anything about the barriers really makes accessing pleasure um, that much easier to do. So I just wanted to really reinforce that, Taylor, that this is such a, a beautiful and comprehensive list of the way most of us are feeling right now and we don't have to change any of that in order to do what you and I are advocating for today. Absolutely. Yeah, and I would love to share a metaphor with all of you around this very idea of giving yourself permission to be feeling and experiencing whatever you are right now. So this metaphor is a wave. I think that all of us might be experiencing this right now, where there are waves that come of stress and uncertainty and fear and loss and sadness and all of these really challenging emotions that it makes sense to feel during a time of crisis. And what I want to encourage is that when this wave comes, to really give yourself permission to feel all of these things. We are human. And it is inherently human to feel these emotions, especially when we're going through something so new and unprecedented and challenging. And I think part of what this permission can look like is really tuning in to what's happening in your body as you experience this wave. So noticing as you feel the fear and the loss and the overwhelm, how does that show up in your body? Do you feel a tightness in your chest? Or do you just feel like you want to cry? Or do you feel a sinking in your stomach? Or do you feel like you just have a, a lot of energy in your body and you feel really amped up? Whatever it is for you, I really encourage you to notice and be curious about however these feelings are showing up in your body as this wave comes. And to really bring a sense of understanding and permission and awareness to whatever these sensations are for you. And I want to encourage that eventually the wave will pass, right? Our bodies can't sustain this level of discomfort for long. And so the time comes when the wave shows up and then it passes. And I think that when it passes, it's a really great opportunity 
to get grounded again, to connect with pleasure, to be mindful, to connect with the things that feel certain and comforting and soothing so that you're building up your resilience for the next time the wave shows up. And the hope is that over time, as you get grounded and connect with yourself in the calmer waters, and as you give yourself permission to feel this really big wave, that eventually the waves will start to balance out a little bit. And you'll notice that as they come, you feel more capable of taking them on and giving yourself permission to be with those feelings. I wanna share with you some other ways to work through the barriers that we're talking about. So the first one, and I know we've mentioned it already, but I really wanna highlight it again, is to give yourself permission to be where you are. We've never been through something like this before, and we don't know how to do this. And so I think it's okay to give yourself permission to be feeling whatever you're feeling and coping in whatever way you're coping, and just being really gentle with yourself and allowing yourself and your loved ones to be feeling whatever is coming up for you. The second thing I want to encourage is to take a mindfully self-compassionate stance. So mindful self-compassion is all about integrating mindfulness, which we've been talking about, with self-compassion. So it's really being mindful and also being really gentle and supportive and loving towards yourself. And so being mindfully self-compassionate might look like attuning to the feelings that are showing up in your body and giving yourself some physical support, like you see in this image of maybe holding your chest or holding yourself in the areas where you feel tension to give that physical representation of self-compassion. It might also look like inviting some gentle and loving uh, affirmations, right? So saying things like, I deserve some space to experience pleasure right now. I give myself permission to be feeling all of these challenging emotions. I deserve to experience love and support and care right now. So really, I would encourage you to be mindful and self-compassionate during this time. The next thing that I want to encourage is to be um, understanding of your gas tank. So I use the gas tank as a metaphor with my clients to understand their capacity, what level of energy they have to give to themselves, to work, to their children, to their partner, um, what kind of energy they have in their tank. And something I encourage you to notice is what uh, drains your gas tank and what fills your gas tank. And I also want to name that I think during this time, a lot of us are gonna have a, a bit less gas in our tank because of the collective anxiety and uncertainty and change. So it's part understanding what fills your tank what drains it so that you can be mindful of how you can take care of yourself. And then also giving yourself permission to be running a little bit low during this time. I also believe that getting support from others is really important. As I mentioned, we are relational beings and we really rely on connection with other people to soothe our emotions and our nervous systems and to find a sense of connection. And so I really want to encourage you to reach out to your loved ones, to connect with your therapist or to connect with a new therapist if you don't have one, to really think about how you can access support from your community so that you have space to talk about what you're feeling and how it's impacting you. And you can get that validation and that support and encouragement from those around you. And finally, I really want to encourage engaging in self-advocacy and boundary setting. As you become aware of your gas tank and what fills it and what drains it, I think it can be really helpful to start to set boundaries around that. To notice, maybe I need to set a boundary around how much I'm on social media right now 
or how much I'm watching the news because it really drains that tank of energy. Or maybe I need to set a boundary with my loved ones around how much of their anxiety and fear I'm really able to hold and hear. So I want to encourage you that you can be both compassionate and assertive in advocating for your boundaries and your limitations so that you can be really intentional about your well-being and your capacity. Thanks, Taylor. I love this list and I really love that image too. I think it's really like a soothing and a, and a nice reminder of how simple it can be to show up for ourselves right now, especially if you live alone. Because uh, I'm, you know, talking to lots of people who live alone right now about the, the uniqueness of, you know, not having people immediately accessible or, you know, being able to go for coffee. So this here is available to you at all times, regardless of if you're in an 800 square foot apartment with five people or a 3000 square foot mansion by yourself, you know, like this is available to you. I also had another thought, Taylor, as you were talking a few slides ago. Um, this is not like a fully formed idea, but I want to get your take on it. You were talking about um, the importance of giving permission to feel whatever is present, if it's sadness. I don't know if you mentioned anger, but anger is one that was coming to mind for me. And I so agree, like we have to give ourselves permission to feel these things. And, and I also wanted to say, um, to that point that crying or getting angry and punching a pillow or feeling like full of distress and needing to shake it out or run, run down the street, like these are our body's intuitive ways of discharging traumatic stress, right? So if you feel something welling up in your body, even if it, even if you tell yourself a story that it's not right to be angry, or it isn't safe to take a jog around the block, or um, it means you're weak if you cry. Like, I, I just really want to gently challenge the legitimacy of those narratives and replace it with what I feel is a more like evidence-based perspective that our bodies are really good at telling us when we need to discharge energy. And that's what tears are. And that's what punching a pillow does. Uh, and the frame that came up for me as you were talking was like, oh, you know what? Like crying might be a, a way to connect to pleasure right now or punching a pillow or I don't know, um, dancing angrily in your kitchen. Like what, whatever expression it takes for you, I don't, we don't often think about doing things like crying or screaming or punching pillows. We don't think of those as acts of pleasure, but right now there might be nothing more pleasurable than just having a good sob. Uh, I don't know, Taylor, does that, have, does that resonate for you or am I going crazy over here? It totally resonates. I'm so glad you brought that up. I think that's a conversation I've been having with my clients is how do we not just give ourselves permission to feel these things, but release them and allow ourselves to release them in the way that we need. And I've been telling people like, give yourself permission to have a tantrum, right? Like, totally. Yeah. Like, I don't care if you need to scream and hit, hit yeah. pillows and just like completely let it out because I think that our bodies really need that right now. And so much messaging around pushing down feelings and suppressing mm -hmm. our sadness and our anger and, you know, our big emotions. And I think what we really need is the opposite to, to give ourselves permission to just let them out and, and to enjoy it. Yeah, it feels good. Yeah. You like get out the anger and you hit the pillow and you let out one of those kind of wild screams. Yeah. Like, oh, it feels good. It feels relieving. It feels like it's something that we need. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, that's, yes, that just like gives me chills. It feels so, so true. All the time, I think that's true. But especially right now, it's, it's like, I kind of feel like right now it's a non negotiable. If you want to maintain your mental health, um, you need to be listening to your body and discharging uh, stress and fear and anxiety as often as you can. Otherwise, it just gets all pent up and then like bad things happen. And maybe I'll just add in a disclaimer as well. 
if you don't know how to do this, or if you feel really afraid that if you, if you, you know, pull the plug out of the bathtub, so to speak, like whoosh, there's going to be this really powerful reaction that you can't control. It's a really good indicator that you should have a therapist do this with you until you feel confident in your ability to do it by yourself uh, in a way that won't lead to massive overwhelm. So Taylor and I, we're, we're making these suggestions really in the container of like, I know how to do this safely. I feel confident in my ability to feel big emotions and regulate them without getting flooded or too overwhelmed. If that container doesn't fit for you right now, this is a great time to connect with a therapist who can mindfully walk you through how to do that in a very um, safe way. So I just wanted to throw that out there as well. So what brings you pleasure? We've talked through what pleasure is, why it matters. We have a shared understanding now of what mindfulness is and how we can use it to tune in to our body's experiences. I think we're all on the same page about our barriers to pleasure and wow, what a, what a powerful experience of common humanity that we're having right now in terms of um, the barriers that are blocking us from feeling good and, and pleasurable in our body. So the common humanity, that's a, a piece of mindful self-compassion. It's the ability to acknowledge and connect in my body to the true experience that so many other people are feeling this exact same way right now. So I, I just want to pause for a minute and reflect on that. You know, Taylor and I are recording this webinar for you in, in this moment. And everybody who watches this will feel similar barriers, similar emotions. So just imagining the web of connection that we are creating. Uh, just by showing up in this space and having this conversation about pleasure. You are not alone in the struggles that you're experiencing. Taylor and I are having these struggles ourselves. Our clients are having these struggles. The people who watch this webinar are having these struggles. We're really all in this together. So that can be a very soothing reminder when you are feeling overwhelmed by your experience. Just coming back to this place and reminding yourself, I'm not alone here. There are so many people who are also feeling guilty, afraid, overwhelmed, ashamed. Okay, I'm connected to others in this experience. And as we soothe ourselves in this way, like Taylor was saying, allowing ourselves to feel the hard emotions, when the, when the wave of those hard emotions begins to subside and we're feeling grounded again, we can start to get curious about what I can do to prioritize and experience pleasure now. So I wanna walk you through an exercise that we uh, use with our clients, like probably multiple times a week, really aimed at helping you connect to what brings you pleasure. We have these beautiful images on the screen and, and these are like, I mean, this is like my, my and Taylor's pleasure profile, right? Like things that are warm and soft and taste good and, uh, but yours might look very different. So these are, this is a place to start, but by no means um, an all encompassing view of what it takes to feel pleasurable sensations. So I'm going to invite you again to close your eyes if that feels comfortable for you. I'm going to walk you through a guided meditation um, that really involves the use of our memory and our mind going to ask you to remember things from, from your past. So it can be easiest to do that when we close our eyes, simply eliminating some stimulation from our brain so that it's a little bit easier to connect to memories, to sensations in our body. And let's start by taking three nice, deep, cleansing breaths in through your nose, and out through your mouth. Turn your attention to your mouth. 
specifically to your tongue and to your experience of taste. And I want you to recall one of the most delicious things that you have eaten, sipped, guzzled, whatever the route of ingestion might be for you. What we're really connecting to right now is a sense memory of taste. Maybe it's a delicious sweet dessert or a savory piece of meat or snack food or a glass of wine or a really excellent scotch. Who knows? Calling to mind a vivid memory of your experience Experience with this thing that tasted delicious. And noticing as you remember this experience, what happens in your body right now? What's happening in your mouth, in your chest, in your belly? Just becoming curious and aware of the sensations that accompany this memory of a delicious thing that you have tasted. And next, moving to your eyes, your sense of sight, and recalling something beautiful that you've taken in through your eyes. It could be a person, a landscape, a piece of art. No judgment or expectation about what the thing was or is, just allowing your, your body to bring to the surface a visual reminder of something that brought you pleasure in your body. And again, becoming curious about what happens in my body here now as I remember the visual imagery that brought me pleasure. And shifting now to your ears, bringing to mind a sound, something that you've heard before that fills you with a sense of joy and peacefulness. Noticing what happens in your body as you remember the sound that comes back into your mind. Moving now to your nose and remembering a scent. Maybe something that I smelled once or a scent that is present in my environment frequently all the time. No expectation about what it is. Just a memory of something that when you smell it, fills you with a sense of pleasure. And again, noticing what happens in my body now as I imagine smelling that thing that smells so good. And finally, shifting your attention to your hands, to your skin. and calling to mind 
a memory of something that you've made contact with. Something that when you touch it now or when you've touched it in the past, ah, oh, so good, so pleasurable to connect to that tactile experience. And again, noticing what happens in your body now in this present moment as you remember the thing that you've touched before that brought you pleasure. And coming back into your body, your full body, noticing your breath in and out, and then slowly inviting your eyes to open and your awareness to return to your screen with me, with Taylor, and welcome back. So I hope that you were able to connect to multiple experiences, memories of pleasure. And my intention here is multifaceted. Recalling memories helps us get creative and curious about what types of stimuli we can use in the present moment to replicate those experiences of pleasure. Also, we know that the brain responds to memories, to things that we think about doing and experiencing in the same way it responds to actually doing the thing. This is science, guys. This is not me just being like, woo, like this is real. Our brain responds to memories, to thinking in, a, in the same way it responds to actually doing. And this is really exciting information for us right now, because like Taylor was saying earlier, we are legitimately stuck in our homes with less access to pleasurable experiences than we are in our normal lives, when we're out and about and engaging and connecting and experiencing different, different spaces. That doesn't mean that there's nothing here in my space, like we talked about earlier. There's, there are always things, no matter where we are, that can bring us pleasure. But when we feel limited or when we feel overwhelmed or stressed, we can go to our memory. We can meditate on memories of sensations of things that we've eaten, sounds, sights, smells, textures. We can call these to mind and really soothe our body in the same exact way my body is soothed when I pick up this real tangible warm mug. So we are going to include in, um, in our follow-up email today with the recording of this webinar some worksheets uh, that you can use as prompts to help you really think about what brings you pleasure and identify lists for yourself of, you know, what, what are the things in my current environment? What are the memories, past experiences? And, and in what ways can I get creative about bringing new things into my environment that will give me the opportunity to connect with and prioritize sensual pleasure right now? A few other tips for accessing pleasure. Taylor and I want to encourage you to be really intentional about scheduling time to connect with sensual pleasure, especially if you're home with small children. Um, no one, I think, I mean, this is a maybe a bold statement. I don't have children myself, so I'm not just, you know, I'm, I'm not just like being biased about my own experience, but as someone who doesn't have children at home, I still think that no one is struggling more right now than parents who are home with children. Um, whoa, talk about overwhelm, constant stimulation, lack of space for self-care and quiet reflection. So all of us need to have intentional schedules and, and be really mindful about prioritizing pleasure, but this is especially important if your days are going by in a sort of um, what feels like an uncontrollable whoosh. 
If you feel like you don't have control over your schedule and your space, I really invite you to prioritize a timer on your phone at 6 a.m. that wakes you up and reminds you to do something pleasurable for five minutes. Whatever it looks like for you, give yourself permission to make this a priority in your day-to-day -day life. This might happen sporadically. Um, you might just find a, a peaceful moment where everyone's napping or not paying attention or not asking you for something and like, oh, okay, right now I could do something pleasurable. Or you might need to incorporate this into your routine if you know yourself well enough to say like, yeah, spontaneous or sporadic is not going to happen for me. Um, that like I fall into that category. If I want to prioritize something, I know that I'm not going to do it spontaneously. I have to incorporate it into my routine and do it um, consistently and reliably. Otherwise, like seven days go by and I haven't meditated once and I didn't even think about it. We've been talking a lot here about feeling pleasure in your body, pleasure as a form of self-care. But again, I want to circle back to the power of sharing pleasurable experiences with your partners, loved ones, children, friends, whatever the case may be. Um, sharing pleasure is a powerful act, a radical act, I would say, and it will transform um, the, the energy that exists between you and the person with whom you are sharing a pleasurable experience. One thing you can do, and again, we'll include, um, we'll include an instruction sheet in our follow-up email that walks you through exactly how to do this, is to schedule what we call a pleasure date. And a pleasure date is uh, an intentional time that I carve out with the intention to connect to each of my five senses. So I bring to the table something that tastes delicious, something that smells good, something I like to look at, a picture, a piece of art, a sound that feels soothing and pleasurable to me, and something I like to touch. I bring those into one experience, either by myself or with a partner, with a child, with a friend. If you're doing this with someone else, you can both bring your pleasure items to the table and you can share them with each other. If you're doing this via Zoom, obviously you're not going to be able to touch or taste something that, you know, the person has across the screen, but you can do the act of closing your eyes and imagining, and then you can have a conversation about what do I feel? What do I notice? What do I like about this? What do I not like about this? Right? It's a way of getting into our bodies and connecting to pleasure with the people that we love in the service of compassion, self-care, and connection. Having a variety of ways to connect with pleasure is very important. This is why we look at all five of the senses and, and we'll add sexual stimulation in there as well, right? The more options we have on the menu, the more likely it is that I will have access to something in the moment when I need it most. So if there are only three things you do that bring you pleasure, taking hot baths, drinking tea and doing yoga, those are great things, and they, are, I believe, are going to help you feel so much better right now. But what happens if you're hot, you run out of hot water, or you, you know, don't have time to make a cup of tea, or you have injured your back and can't do yoga? All of a sudden, you're out of options, and you're stuck in an experience that lacks pleasure. So your menu should be diverse and robust. The way you experience pleasure with yourself and with your partner that way, there is always something available to you. Taylor, do you want to add anything to this before we move on? I think that's a great list. I definitely think having an expansive um, perspective around pleasure so that you have lots of options for how to experience it. Um, and I wanted to highlight, I think, the value of if you're not sharing space with loved ones or a partner, um, the power of video chatting over just texting or talking on the phone, if you can. It's really powerful to see someone else's face and expressions. And I think that's a lot more soothing and connecting. Um, so if it feels possible to create these pleasurable experiences through this um, interaction where you can see each other, it feels like an important thing to hold. That's a really great reminder. 
So I just want to remind you one more time. I know I'm beating you over the head with this, but I'm doing it because it's that important. Pleasure is always available to you, regardless of how stressed you feel, guilty you feel, overwhelmed, afraid, regardless of how what resources you have available in your space, how many people are in your house, how many people are demanding your time and attention, pleasure is always available to you. It is not a black or white scenario. It's not, I feel stress or pleasure. The learning and the, the invitation for you today is to begin to expand your lens so that you can feel stress and pleasure. And then notice as you welcome more pleasure into your experience that the stress gets a little bit smaller. It's not going to go away. We, Taylor and I have no magic pills that we can give you that will make the stress, the anxiety, and the fear go away. That's not our objective. We do want those emotions to be manageable. And if they feel unmanageable, you should connect with a the therapist. But we're not trying to get them to go away. We're trying to learn how to attune to the pleasure that's always available to us in every moment, even when I feel scared and stressed and overwhelmed. So as we're wrapping up today, I want you to notice again, the items in your space, this is what you connected to at the beginning of the presentation, the items in your space that have the potential to elicit a pleasurable response in your body. And when we finish today, I would love for you to spend five minutes mindfully connecting to something that is around you right now in this very room that you're in. Five minutes really connecting to whatever that thing is or focusing on the quality of the, if it's, war if it's warmth in your room, spending five minutes really just feeling the warmth and noticing the pleasure that that elicits in your body. If it's an animal that you want to pet or a blanket you want to hold. If it's movement, we haven't talked much about movement today, but movement can be a wonderful form of pleasure. If you wanna turn on some music and dance or stretch or do yoga, there is something I guarantee you in your environment right now that can bring you a sense of pleasure and ease. So please, five minutes when we're finished here today, connect to pleasure, and then get really curious about how that impacts your experience for the rest of the day. I want to wrap up our, our webinar today by just summarizing the encouragement that we want to, to offer to you. So the first thing I would encourage is to journal and reflect on why pleasure matters to you. I know we've been sharing why we believe it matters and why we think it's so powerful. And I think something that could be really meaningful is to take what you learned today and then to give yourself some opportunity to sit with how that feels and to be curious and reflective around why pleasure matters to you specifically. Um, to sit with whatever's coming up for you and why you really want to center pleasure in your life right now. I also want to encourage you to come up with ideas for what allows you to feel pleasure in your body. Um, so I know we've talked about this, to sit down and, and kind of create a list of what allows me to feel pleasure in each of my senses, what allows me to feel sexual pleasure, um, and really getting a sense of the variety of, of ways that you can connect with pleasure. Again, we want to encourage you to set up a pleasure date for yourself, and we will follow up with resources um, for how to do this. Um, but maybe setting aside an intentional time to connect with pleasure in each of your senses and ensuring that if you are someone that needs to schedule, that maybe you set that up for yourself. I also want to encourage you to come up with ideas for what allows you to share pleasure with a partner, loved ones, or anyone in your community right now. And I encourage you to get really creative because if say you're alone and you can't share pleasure in person with somebody, you might need to get kind of creative about how you and a loved one can have a pleasurable experience together. So I encourage you to brainstorm of, of what you can do to have these experiences whether it's watching a film together that you both really enjoy and talking about it, 
for sharing uh, really pleasurable memories that you experienced together, trying to come up with some ways that you can access pleasure with those that you love right now. I know that a lot of what we've been hearing in terms of how to manage the stress and the change of what's happening in the world is to create some kind of routine for yourself. And I want to encourage you that it's okay if, if finding a routine and a structure is feeling really challenging for you. But with that being said, I think it might be really helpful and powerful to find a way to incorporate pleasure into that daily routine. Just like you want to encourage yourself to do the work that you have for that day or to make sure that you eat enough meals. I encourage you to prioritize creating some space for pleasure just as much as anything else that ends up on your, on your daily routine. Thanks, Taylor. So our final reminder to you is, or invitation really, is to remember that you don't have to do this alone. Um, for some people, watching this webinar, reading articles, returning to practices that you've already, you know, built up in terms of, you know, strategies that you use to increase your resiliency, that this might be all you need. But if you find yourself in a position where you're digesting free resources online, watching webinars, reading blogs, doing guided meditations, and that just isn't enough, and you're feeling still overwhelmed and just not well in your mind or in your body, that is a wonderful indicator that you would benefit from some mental health support. Taylor and I are available here at the Center for Couples and Sex Therapy. We are seeing all of our clients via telehealth right now, and we can see anyone who lives in the state of Oregon. Um, we are doing reduced fee services for folks who's, uh, who've experienced job loss or income reduction as a result of the pandemic, because we know that is a very real thing that's happening right now. Um, so reach out to us, visit our website, you can read more about our clinical work, about the ways that we can help you through this difficult time. Reach out as well if you need resources. If you're watching this from another state and you don't know how to find a good therapist, you have my email and Taylor's email here. Um, we really believe as mental health providers that we are being called right now to step up to the plate to, to help our community. Um, cope with this really difficult time. We, we, have, we have all the goods, right? We're, we're trained in mental health. We take good care of ourselves. We're connecting every day with other people who are experiencing these struggles. But I bet that between Taylor and myself and the rest of our team at the Center for Couples and Sex Therapy, um, that we can point you in some direction that will feel useful. So you don't have to do this alone. We're not doing this alone. Taylor and I are seeing our individual therapists every week. Uh, we're talking about stress. We're brainstorming together ways that we can be okay. We're connecting with friends and family. Uh, we, we've got to take really good care of ourselves right now. And if you need support, reach out to us. Call a therapist you've worked with in the past. Do whatever you need to do to get the support you need to feel better. Thank you so much for joining us. You can check out our website to uh, watch the webinar we did last week about keeping calm during COVID-19. Next week, we are planning to do another webinar about uh, relationships. My working title, um, although I probably won't stick with this in the end, is how not to get divorced uh, during the pandemic because things are tough right now, especially if you had stress and tension in your relationship before you were literally stuck in your house together 24 seven. So we are going to um, meet with you again next week. We're not sure what day and time yet, but uh, we will let you know via our email list. If you're not on our email list, go to our website, you can sign up there. And again, if you need anything at all, feel free to reach out to us. So thank you so much.